Hi everyone, and welcome to today's tutorial on basic procedural le level creation in Unreal Engine 4. Uh, this is just one of the levels that I threw together and pretty quickly. Um, these assets have come from uh, Lewis on the UE4 forums. He's actually got a pack that you can purchase, but this is the free variant uh, that I used to quickly just get something going. So this is a procedurally uh, generated level. Um, and while I've created a cave system here, the techniques I'm going to be showing you can be used to create far, far, far more than just caves. You could be creating towns, you could be creating uh, different levels within uh, a building. Uh, there's plenty you can do with it. So to begin with, let's show you how this works. So if I stop my simulation, this is actually the level that I created. Uh, it's pretty much empty. It's just a landscape with a little bit of a like a very simplistic water material thrown on top. And if I was to run a simulation, you can actually see what it's doing. It goes off and generates the level in a grid and fills it up. Very simple, but it has a pretty good uh, output in my opinion. So uh, to do this, we have to have a few things created. Now, first off, you need to have a general, simple, uh, persistent level that everything's getting streamed into. And next you need to develop your own pieces. So if I look at this, I can see here that this is a piece, actually, I'll put it in unlit mode. I can see that I've got piece one, piece two, three, four, five, and six. Now these have all been developed to be in 10 meter by 10 meter squares, just very, very simplistic. And if you don't have the levels tab available to you, you can do so by going window, levels, and that should pop up. Now, while I did the demonstration using the caves, I'm going to do a demonstration for you uh, that's a bit cleaner, just using blocks, so you can get the general methodology and go from there. I'll also put these files uh, online so that people can kind of rip them apart and poke around. So to begin with, let's start a new level, and it's going to be an empty level. Okay. Now, we've got our new level going on here, so the first thing we want to do is add a directional light to it, drag it in. Now from here, uh, we actually start to develop the pieces. So I'm going to go Levels, and I'm going to go Create New. Click it, and I'm going to make a new folder called Procedural. And this first map that I create is going to be called Procedural 01. Say. You can now see that we have a persistent level as well as Procedural 1. Now I need you to double click on Procedural 1 to make sure that it's selected as the current level. And what we're going to do is go to the content browser, I'm going to type in cube, and I'm going to throw in this one meter cube. Just drop it into the map. I'm going to set the location to 0, 0, 0. So it's in the center of the map. Next up, I'm going to scale it on the x axis and the y axis by 10, so that we have a 10 meter by 10 meter square. And this is actually going to be our very first piece. I know it's empty, but it's good to have a couple of blank squares in there for this type of thing. So I've got this first one. I'm now going to go here and, uh, oh, one thing I forgot to do was if I go back to this actor, I'm going to set the uh, directional light to be movable. Okay, good. Now, under levels, what I'd like you to do is click on the cube that we added, hit Control C. Then go Levels, Create New. It's going to be called Procedural 2. I'm going to hide Procedural 1 and hit Control V. And this time I'm going to drag it up and I'm going to just add a second block. So I did an Alt drag to duplicate. I'm just going to get this guy, put it there. At which point, yeah, that's good enough. I'm going to grab both again, Control C, hide this layer, levels, create new, those following along at home, procedural three, Control V. Now I'm going to, oops, I'm now going to drag this top piece around a bit. Um, might do some weird shape like this. Still got some visibility going on. Super simplistic. Um, let me grab this and this and this, Control C. You can do whatever you want here, I'm not really gonna. It doesn't really matter too much, it's purely for the demonstration's sake. Procedural 4, Control V, 
uh, procedural form. I'm going to move you down to this corner, and I'm going to move you into. Uh, let's go. Let's go somewhere in the middle. Let's go that way there. Yeah, let's go there. Okay. So we've created procedural one, two, three, and four. I'm now going to go file and hit uh, save all levels. And I'm going to save this one. So this will be the base level that I haven't saved yet. It's going to be called procedural underscore P. P is for persistent because it's the map that everything gets loaded into. So double click on the persistent level. This is very important. And open up blueprints, open level blueprint. Now this doesn't have to be done in the level blueprint. But, you know, it could be an actor that controls it, but we'll do it here because it's just a bit more straightforward this way. So first off, we need to generate a grid of pieces that we're going to stream in. Now, to generate a grid, we essentially need to go and do a for loop between 0 and 9, which is 10 pieces, and then run a for loop off of our for loop so that we create rows coming off of columns. Okay? Now, this first thing we're going to do here is, I've typed in 9, but, you know, this should really be a variable. So I'm going to right click and promote it to a variable and I'm going to call it level grid size. Okay. I'm going to connect it to here and I'm going to connect it to here. Now, here's where the, uh, the magic happens. Right click and do get streaming level. Now this node is very useful because what it does is it gets a reference uh, of a, a level name and it loads it up. However, um, Instead of loading it, what we're actually going to do is drag off of it and we're going to create an instance. So what this does is it actually creates a separate copy of the level that you're going to load. And this is great because it means that we can get a copy and put it wherever we want and create as many copies as we want. So we're going to get a copy of a level name. But if we want to get a copy of a level name, we need to know which levels we're going to actually be referencing in all of this. So to do that, what I'm going to be doing is we're going to drag off of this called get. And what we're actually going to do is see this here. I'm going to right click and promote a variable. This is going to be an array of uh, streaming level names. Okay. And we actually want to get a random, um, a random item from this array. So I'm going to call off this. I'm going to get length and I'm going to get a random integer. So now we're getting a random integer in this list of names. So it's going to plug into here. Um, and with that done, we're then going to say, once the level has been loaded, we're going to first off position it somewhere. So I'm going to set a transform on it. And then, oops, and then after I've set the transform, I'm going to drag off of this again. And this time I'm going to set that it should be loaded. So this tells it that, yes, make sure it's been loaded up. Drag off of it again and do set visible. So this says should be visible. And these have to be checked. So they're both checked, both enabled. Okay. So from here, all we have to do is tell it where to place the blocks, which is great because to do that, we drag off of level transform and we do a make transform. Now, if we wanted to, we could just multiply the X, Y position with a number uh, that is the size of each uh, piece. However, if we were to do that, it would create a grid that comes from the middle of the map outwards. Uh, but what we really want to do is have the middle of the map as the center of the grid. So to do that, we need to actually get the size of the, um, of the map and divide it by two and then subtract that from the positions that we'll be putting in here. So to get those positions, all we need to do is we get this, um, we're going to need to create a new variable that is going to be a float. Uh, so we're going to go variables, add variable, and this is going to be called um, tile size. And make sure this is set to be a float. And we're going to say by default, um, our pieces are going to be 1000 to go with our 10 meter pieces. Okay. So if I go the level grid size, multiplied by uh, multiplied by tile size and then divided by 2 
that gets us half the size of the map. Okay. Now, if I was to drag off of this indice and multiply it by tile size, so int times float, it's going to get a little messy, unfortunately. So it's going to get multiplied by tile size. Uh, you know, to keep this clean, I might actually just bring a variable in again. Um, and then I was to subtract. Oops. Um, subtract this distance. And then I did that again. So I get this one. And I'm multiplying it by tile size. And I'm again subtracting a float. Float that I'm subtracting is this half size. Um, then going to go location, um, split struct pin, which gives me x, y, z as separate inputs. So you're going to be x and you're going to be y. Don't care about z, it can be at 0, 0. Um, and then for rotation, I'm going to go and say the rotation is going to be equal to a random int multiplied by 90. So random int can be between 0 and 3. Oh, actually, it's max minus one, so this actually needs to be four. Okay, so zero times 90, uh, and that will give us a rotation point. Now, we only need to actually care about uh, the your position, so I'm just going to plug that straight into there. You've now got your X position and your Y position. Uh, the only other thing that I'd really recommend doing to keep this uh, clean um, is setting up a unique instance name so that later on you can theoretically stream these out uh, because you know what the names of each section are. And then the simplest way to do that really is going to be to drag off of this and click append. And if the name was for each piece was actually X, X. So the X uh, integer and then put an X in it, and then the Y integer, you're going to have like 7x9, uh, and that's easily uh, referenceable. So with that in mind, um, there's only one thing we have left to do, which is click on streaming level names, and we fill this up with the names of, oops, if I can spell, of all of the pieces going into it. Suddenly forgotten how many I created before. Cool. And in theory, compile. Um, now these are all hidden except for the top one. And if I hit simulate, voila, we have a very simple environment that was created. And if I want it to be, uh, you know, not just a disembodied camera floating around and just played, I can now actually run around this little map that I created. And we have a pretty cool little system. And you know, I could create as many of these as I wanted. If I wanted, I could have four stacked on top of each other to create you know, a building story or a cave system or some such. And these pieces can be as large or as complicated as, as you want them to be, as long as they're contained. In... It's obviously uh, one of those things that if you want to have sections only connecting to others, you're going to need to extend it. But the logic at the core of it all is pretty much the same. Um, and I think you know, that's, that's really the important part here. So yeah, I hope you have learned something with this and I'm looking forward to see what everyone turns out. If you end up using it, please uh, do me a favor and leave us a comment in, uh, on YouTube or uh, tweet me at highly spammable or at pubgamesau, depending on whether you're tweeting me or the business. Um, and I'd, you know, I'd really love to see what you're doing with it because it's, it's always really exciting to hear what people have done with like, little bits of information you've put out there. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to hit me up. I'm more likely to respond on Twitter than I am on uh, YouTube comments, but I'll probably get to you uh, at some stage anyway. Anyway, uh, good luck.